with income taxation on estates and trusts. So, ano lang, ha? para lang uh, marker, kung malaman natin, nasan tayo, ha? balikan lang natin. So, who are your income taxpayers? No? Who are your income taxpayers? Your income taxpayers are your individual. Sino yung individual? Kayo yun. Ha? Kayo yan. Tapos, natural person, biological. And then kung may natural o biological, merong artificial or juridical. Ito yung mga corporation. Sabi ng tax code, corporation shall include partnership no matter how created, including, uh, but not including general professional partnership, joint venture, joint account, pwede sa participation, mutual fund company. So dyan sasama yung mga corporation. Tapos sa pagitan ng individual and corporation, nandyan ang income taxation of estate and trust. Income taxation of estate and trust. Bakit? Kasi lumalabas itong estate and trust, kinukonsider, it is being considered by our law as a taxable person, as a person subject to income tax on a tempora, tempo, tempo, tem temporary character. Temporary lang. Temporary juridical personality. So kung titignan mo, uy, juridical person yan. Oh, by the way, bakit natin kailangan i-segregate ang individual sa corporation? Kasi ang individual from corporation, uh, they have a separate, different taxation rules applicable to them. May kanya-kanya silang taxation rule. Okay? Ang individual from corporation. Halimbawa na lang, ang individual, graduated table, 0 to 35, ganyan. Ang corporation, hindi. Flat rate, 30%. Ang corporation, may minimum corporate income tax, optional gross income tax, branch profit remittance tax, improperly accumulated earning tax. Sa corporation lang applicable yun. Walang ganun ang individual. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yun ang ibig ko sabihin. So, eh, sir, bakit mo nilagay sa gitna ang estate and trust? Kasi ang estate and trust, eto yung matatawag nating alanganin, yung bang nasa, kataw nasa katawan siya ng corporation. Kaya lang, ang puso't damdami niya, individual. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin nun, juridical person siya, pero rules of income tax ng individual ang ia-apply natin sa kanila. Ulitin ko, mahalaga, ikintal sa murang isipan. Ang ia-apply nating rule of income taxation ay eh rule of income taxation ng individual kapag taxable estate and taxable trust. Okay? Keep that in mind. Ngayon, so ang tanong ninyo, sir, ano ba yung estate? Ah, ganito. Ganito kasi nangyayari. Alam mo, alimbawa ikaw, tao ka. Diba? Ito ka. Tao ka. Ah, check mo nga. Hmm, tao ka, diba? Bilang tao, you are a person. Sabi ng batas, birth determines personality. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Kapag tao, ang tao raw pinanganak, siya ay may personalidad. So bakit kailangan i-establish ng ating civil code ang pagkakaroon ng personality? Kasi kakabit ng personality mo, yung mga karapatan mong magmayari. Karapatan mong magkapangalan, pumasok sa kontrata, magmahal, mahalin, at magmayari ng ari-arian. So alimbawa itong taong to, nabubuhay siya, nagawa niyang magkamil na, magkam, magkamit ng limpak-limpak na salapi, nakapagpuntar siya ng sarili niyang building. Wow, building. Yan, building. Tapos sobrang yaman niya, nakabili pa siya ng mga cars. Yan, kotse yan. Kotse yan, ha? Tapos sobrang yaman niya, meron pa siyang, nakabili rin siya ng, ano to? Lahat niyo, ano to? Yan. Airplane. O, oh, kanya lahat yan. Diyos. Yan ang sangkalahatan ng ari-arian. Ang tawag dyan, kasama yung ari-arian, mga obligasyon, responsibilidad, ang tawag natin dyan, estate. Yan yung estate ng tao na nagmamay-ari. Ngayon, habang nabubuhay siya, siya ang may-ari niyan. Sino, pag nagkatanungan, sino may-ari? Ikaw. Kung sino may-ari, sino mag enjoy niyan? Ikaw. Sino mamimigay niyan? Ikaw. Ikaw na may-ari. Kung kapag kumita, kanina mapupunta ang kita sa may-ari, sa'yo, ikaw na may-ari. Yan. 
So, since ikaw ang may-ari, sino magbabayad ng income tax? Ikaw. Pag may kulang ang tax sa binayaran ng ari-arian mo, sino ang habulin ng BIR? Ikaw. Ikaw yung may-ari, ikaw yung tao, ikaw yung nagpapayal ng ITR ng personal mong ari-arian, itong mga to. Yan. So, no problem. Habang ang tao nabubuhay. Ito lang ang issue. Alam mo naman dito sa lupa, ang buhay ng tao, panandalian lang. E paano kapag yung taong may-ari, namatay? Paano kapag namatay? Yan, sabi ng civil code, death extinguishes personality. Kapag ang tao raw namatay, nawawala yung person. O di, nawala yung person. Nawala yung person. Pero ang tanong, tumigil na ba ang pag-ikot ng mundo dahil nawala yung person? No. Tuloy pa rin ang pag-ikot ng mundo. At itong ari-arian niya, tuloy pa rin yan sa pagkita. Nag-earn pa rin ng income yan. So ito ngayon ang tanong. So itong ari-arian niya, sino ang magbabayad ng income tax niyan pag namatay na siya? Sir, sasabihin niyo, sir, yung estate, sir. O talaga, yung estate? O sige. Sino sa estate? Kakausapin mo ba yung building? Kakausapin mo ba yung airplano? Kakausapin mo ba yung kotse? Hindi. So ang point ko, hindi porkit na matay yung may-ari at may estate at hindi pa nalilipat sa mga tagapagmana, eh yung estate kagad ang taxable person. Dito mo ngayon tatanungin, kailan nagkakaroon ng estate subject to income tax? So pag ganyang merong estate, you have to ask the question. You ask the question, is it under judicial administration? Is the estate under judicial administration? If the answer, okay, if the answer to that question is yes, paano natin malaman if under judicial administration? Minsan, babanggitin sa problem, merong executor o merong administrator. Okay? Executor, yan yung taong nakalagay sa last will and testament ng yumao and then inaccept in probate yung kanyang last will and testament and then the executor was uh, validly, validly assumed this function as the executor of the will of the decedent. Kapag naman walang last will and testament o walang executor, ang court magde-designate ng administrator. So ibig sabihin, pag may binanggit na administrator yung problem, it means that there is a court designated administrator. So even whether it be executor or administrator, ibig sabihin, excuse me, ibig sabihin it is under judicial administration. If that is the case, then that's the only time that we will have a taxable estate. We will have a taxable estate. Okay? Now, what then if the answer is no? It is not under judicial administration. If it is not under judicial administration, then rules of income taxation of co-ownership will apply. Rules of income taxation of co-ownership will apply. Ano ibig sabihin nun? In short, ang ibig sabihin niyan, the income of the, the estate will be added to the income of the heirs. And it is the heirs that will pay the income tax thereon. Okay? The heirs will be the one to pay the income tax on the estate. So walang taxable estate na person kapag not under judicial administration. So ulitin ko, yung pag-uusapan natin ngayon na estate subject to income tax, nangyayari lang yan if it is under judicial administration. Okay? Yan. Ngayon, so alam na natin kung kailan merong taxable estate. The estate is the one who will pay its own income tax through the executor or administrator. So meron lang taxable estate kapag it is under judicial administration. Tandaan niya na, mamaya na natin pag-usapan paano pag-compute ng income tax ng estate. Pag-usapan naman natin kapag yung income taxation of trust. Okay? Kailan nagkakaroon ng trust? Nagkakaroon ng trust kapag there are three persons present. Sino-sino? Ito. There is a trustor, 
there is a trustee and there is a beneficiary beneficiary ito beneficiary paano nangyayari yan kasi minsan mayroon taong mayaman uh, mayroon siyang kailangan niya umalis o mawala o hindi niya maasikaso yung ari-arian niya kaya lang yung anak niya ito si beneficiary anak ni trustor Uh, kakailanganin ng pantustos, ng suporta, kailangan ng pera, pero hindi niya pa kayang i-manage dahil minor pa siya. So ang gagawin ng trustor, minsan, ang gagawin niya, itatransfer niya yung property niya kay trustee. Sasabihin ni trustor, oh, trustor, uh, trustee, hawakan mo itong uh, 100 million pesos ko. Hindi sa'yo yan, ha? Hindi sa'yo yan. Para yan sa anak ko, sa kebenepisyari. Hala, pangalagaan mo lang yan, pag kumita, bayaran mo yung income tax, yung ganon. Okay? Okay. So, ang tanong, ito ngayon yung trust, hawak ngayon ni trustee. Ituturing ba natin na kapag kumita yung trust, ang taxable person yung trust? Ha? Okay. So, ito na naman. Magtatanong ka na naman. When it comes to trust, you have to ask the question. You have to ask if it is revocable or irrevocable if it is whether revocable trust revocable or irrevocable trust if it is a revocable trust revocable ibig sabihin pwedeng bawiin ng trustor yung trust pwede niyang bawiin yung income pwede niyang bawiin if it is a revocable trust then Income of the trust will be taxable to the trustor. In short, no separate trust taxable entity. Walang separate trust na taxable entity. Kasi revocable ang trust. Eh. So kumita man yung trust na yan, it will be added to the income of the trustor, and it is the trustor who will pay the tax thereon. Kapag revocable. If revocable. Okay? Now, what if the trust is irrevocable? Ah, that's the only time that there will be a taxable trust. So, in short, there will only be a taxable trust If it is an irrevocable trust, ah, keep that in mind. If it is an irrevocable trust, yan. Eto nang inan tanong. Ngayon nga lam na ninyo kung merong taxable estate or taxable trust. How do we compute for the income of the taxable estate or taxable trust? Okay, Eddie. We begin with gross income. Ay, naging pambura. We begin with gross income. Pareho sila. Gross income. Tapos sa uh, less deductions, such as less, ito, allowable deductions. Ano-ano mga allowable deductions? E di business expense. Business expense, pwede mo i-deduct yan. Ano pa? When I say business expense, Uh, it's either uh, itemized deduction or optional standard deduction. Okay? Itemized deduction or optional standard deduction. Bakit? Kasi tandaan mo ha, sa individual, di ba ang sabi ko sa inyo kanina, pag taxable ang estate, taxable ang trust, rules of income, taxation ng individual ang i-apply natin. Kaya, Gross income, less business expenses, yan yung itemized deduction or optional standard deduction. Remember, sa individual, allowed mag-claim ng optional standard deduction ng individual. Okay? At ito, the reason why I'm telling you this, ito ang special para lang sa estate and trust. Ano yun? Merong isang special na deduction. Ano yun? Yung distribution of income. Distribution of income. Yan. Yan. Didak mo yan, you will now arrive at taxable income, taxable income, then apply yung income tax rate ng pang-individual which is 0% to 35%. 0% to 
to 35%. And that will now be your income tax of estate or trust, okay? And that's how you arrive at income tax of estate and trust, okay? Ngayon, speaking of taxable trust, paano kung ganito ginawa? Uh, kasi nga, graduated rate, ano? graduated table. Let's say, for example, isa akong trustor. Tapos, nag-establish ako ng trust sa'yo, ikaw yung trustee. Tinong kita, magkano binayara mo tax and trust natin? Sabi ko sa'yo. Sabi mo sa akin, ano sir, ganitong halaga. Ha, ah, talaga? Bakit ang laki? Hindi, wala ka bang ginawang mga paraan para mapaliit yung babayaran tax? Sabi. Eh, yung mga deduction naman, kailangan itemize. Tapos, sa uh, distribution of income para maididak, eh kaya tinatanggal yung distribution of income, kaya tinatanggal sa estate or trust yun, hindi dapat itax sa estate or trust, dapat yun itax doon sa beneficiary tumanggap. Kaya ididak natin sa estate or trust, pero idadagdag natin sa gross income ng beneficiary o heir na tumanggap. Ako nga, no? So, talaga hindi bababa. O, alam ko na, ganito gawin natin. Tawagin mo yung kapatid mo, hatiin natin. Halimbawa, yung total taxable income to uh, uh, total taxable income 9 million. Pag ang 9 million tinignan mo sa tax table, papasok siya sa 35% income tax. Yan to gawin natin. Hahatiin ko yung trust. Ibibigay ko sa iyo trust 1, yung trust 2 sa kapatid mo. So di kanya-kanya kayong computation ng trust. So magiging 4.5 million. Yung isa, 4.5 million. So pag nag-compute ng tax yan, hindi na 35. Nandun na lang sa 30% income tax. Sabi mo, ang talino mo, sir. In-split mo yung trust para bumaba. Papasok sa mababang bracket. Ang galing. Alam na ng batas yung gawain mong yun. Kaya sabi ng batas, if there are two or more trust by the same trustor, same trustor, or the same beneficiary, maski na marami pang trust yan, Same trust or same beneficiary, isang trust lang daw yan. Kailangan mag-compute ng consolidated, consolidated income tax ang trust. Kailan nangyayari yan? Two or more trust or trustee but same trust or and same beneficiary. Okay? Same trustor and same beneficiary consolidated, okay? Consolidated, okay. So, so Mr. Joe Montelupa, a resident citizen, died, leaving a net estate of four million. Is this ah? Ang tinatanong ah, tandaan yon. Basa pag nagsosol ka ng problem, una mo mo nang alamin ano ang hinihingi para malaman mo ano yung mga relevant data na gagamitin mo. In the course of solving the problem, magkano raw ang total tax liability ng estate? Estate? Teka lang, may taxable estate ba? Yun ang tanong eh. May taxable estate ba tayo? Meron ba? The net estate, ito, ito, meron dito nagsasabi may taxable estate tayo. Asa na? May nagsasabi dito taxable estate tayo. Ano yun? Ito. Yung executor. May executor yung problem, di ba? May executor yung problem. So having said that, okay. Dahil dyan, meron tayong taxable estate. Okay, so total tax liability of the estate. So the executor, the, the net estate includes an apartment realize a gross income of 300,000. Oh, so, so gross income daw ng estate is 300,000. Yung gross of 5% tax, tax liability naman ang hinihingi. So hindi naman yung after withholding, magkano ang due, no? Tax liability. So sige, let's begin with 300,000. So yan ang uh, gross income ng estate. The executor, so lagay natin dito sa ibabaw, estate. 
the executor distributed 75,000 and 95. Uy, ito na ito ko deduction to. So merong ito na yung mga deductions natin. Merong distribution. So accordingly, sabi sa problem, there was a distribution of 75 and 95 to the daughter and son respectively. Okay, the estate incurred expenses amounting to 100 but 25% is non-deductible. The estate has 1 million cash in bank which also earned an interest of 100,000. Okay, so meron tayong deduction. Isang 75. Ano ba ang tinatanong? Income tax liability of the son. Tinatanong din. O, itabi ko na dito ah, yung uh, daughter. Yung daughter tsaka yung son. So merong naganap na distribution sa daughter, 75,000, tatanggalin natin 'yan sa sa estate. Hindi kasi siya dapat magbayad ng tax diyan. Pero tingnan mo magic, na wala sa estate, nalipat dito 'yan. Kasi si, si daughter ang dapat magbayad niyan, okay? 75 tapos yung isa kay son, 95,000. So tanggalin natin 95,000. So dito ililipat mo kay son yan, 95,000. Okay? Yan. 75 and 95,000 to the daughter and son respectively. The estate also incurred expenses. O yan, may business expenses. So let's say itemized deduction yan. So magkano? Uh, expenses, incurred expenses amounting to 100 but 25% lang ang 25% is non-deductible. Ah, okay. So 75% lang ang pwede mo i-deduct out of 100,000. So 75,000. 75,000. Okay? Yan. So kumpleto na? So kumpleto na ba tayo? Oh, yan, kumpleto na tayo. Meron pa bang ibang deduction na nakakalimutan tayo? Sir, yung 20,000 na deduction na ay wala na 'yon, tinanggal na sa batas 'yon. Okay? Wala na 'yon. Non-deductible expense. So The estate has 1 million cash in bank. Okay. So having said that, so magdididak pa ba tayo ng 20,000? Hindi na. Oo. Wala ng 20,000 na deduction. Okay. So magkano ngayon ang para sa estate? 300, 150, 95, 150, 245, 245. So magkano yung 245? 55,000. Taxable income, 55,000. E si daughter, taxable gross income, 75,000. Si son, 95,000. O, magkano income tax? Zero, zero, zero. Kasi gumagamit tayo ng graduated table, first 250,000 is exempt. Follow? Pero pag tinong sa'yo, magkano taxable income ni estate? 55, si daughter 75, si son 95. So naiintindihan nyo yung exercise? Okay tayo? Ha? Okay, thank you. Very good. Ha? Okay. Sige, tungkol naman sa trust. So, ito, si Trust naman. Gawa tayo, solve tayo ng problem sa Trust. Si Mr. Del Fuente created a trust for his daughter. Okay? Ana, a minor, and appointed attorney puso as trustee. Mr. Del Fuente transferred an apartment out of which rent income of 190 was received by the Trust with an expense of 45,000 during the year. 50% of the gross income was given to Anna and another 20% based on the net receipts was recorded as valid expenses of the trust. So unahin muna natin yung taxable income. Taxable income. Dahil yung income tax na ito, sobrang baba na itong mahalagang to, exempt na to. Taxable income na lang ang kunin natin. Ha? Taxable income. Unahin natin yung taxable income of the trust. So, transfer na pa ang rent income of 190, net of 5% withholding was received with an expense of 45 during the year. Annual na yan, hindi monthly yan. So, 190, 190 less, uh, uh, bali lumalabas 95% yung 190 ha. 
So, 190 divided by 95%, magkano yan? Kinalculator mo pa. 200,000 yan, malamang. Tama ba ako? Ha? Yes, so, sir. Okay, thank you. 200,000. So, for the trust, gross income, 200,000. Tapos, ito na, deductions tayo. Anong available deductions natin? Merong distribution, di ba? Uh, uh, was received by the trust with an expense of 45,000. So, una yung expense muna, which was 45,000. Expense. 50% of the gross income was given to Anna, to Anna and 20% based on the net receipt was recorded as valid expense of the trust. 20% based on the net receipts was recorded as valid. Ah, okay. Hindi, yung palang 45,000 na to, decoy lang yan. That's not necessarily the valid expense, di ba? Now, what was determined as valid expense was 20% of the net receipt. When we say net receipt, after deducting the business expense, no? Yung expense. Okay, so 45,000, uh, so 200 less 45, magkano yun? Uh, 100, 155. And then, ang, hindi pala 45 yan. 20% based on the net receipts was recorded as valid expense of the trust. Ah, okay, okay. Sige lang ha, ulitin natin, medyo nalito ako eh. So sa trust, Gross income, 200,000. Tapos, to arrive at net receipt kasi binigyay was received by the trust with an expense of 45,000 during the year. Net of 5%, gross income was given to Anna and another 20% based on the net receipt was recorded as valid expense of the trust. So, assume natin yung ano, yung ang inenet natin yung binigay kay Ana, 50% of the gross income. So yung distribution na, so ito si Ana. Distribution, 50% of gross income. So magkano gross income? 190. So 190, 200,000, 200,000. So 50% niyan, 100,000. So ang net receipt, uh, 100. Tapos, yung expense, valid expense, 20% of 100, 20,000. So, okay. So, yan na yun. So, taxable income mo, 80,000. Magkano ang tax? Income tax, zero. Bakit? And not exceeding 250. Not exceeding 250 exempt. Okay. Si Ana naman, beneficiary, magkano lang tinanggap ni Ana? Tinanggap, tinanggal natin dito, 100. So yan na rin ang kanyang taxable income, 100. Magkano ang tax niya? Zero. Okay? So yun. So ganun lang naman ang estate and trust. Okay? Okay, for this problem... May kita mo, iisa lang ang trustor, Mr. Mundo. Pero meron siyang multiple trust created. Tapos common beneficiary. Aba, eh di pag ganito, pag ganito ang problem, this is calling for consolidated, no? Consolidated. So paano lang ang gagawin mo? Simple lang yan. Kunin mo muna yung, ay niingi, income tax due eh, no? Sige. Kunin mo muna yung net income ng trust. So, 400 less 75. Pag tinanggal mo dito, ibibigay mo kay beneficiary yan, 75. Tinanggal mo dito, bibigay mo kay beneficiary, 125. Yan. Okay, so, 400 less 75. Mali pala yung tinitignan ko. <laughs> Ito pala yan. So T1, T2, Conso, then Bene. Yan, Bene. 
So gross income, so 400, 800, bene, 250, no? Tapos deductions, yung deductions, so 75, tapos 125, tapos ito na, yung distribution. Yung distribution, less 150, Tinanggal mo dyan, bigay mo dito kay Bene, 150. Tapos si Trust 2, less 175. Bigay mo dito kay Bene, uh, magkano ba ito? 150, tsaka 175, bawas din. Yan. Tapos may sariling expense si Bene, uh, 100. Okay? Abala. So, 150 tsaka 175. Okay, so, si Trust 1, 400 minus 75 less 150. So, 400 minus 75 less 150. Magkano yan? 325? Tapos, si T2, 800 minus 125 minus 175. So, 500. Yan. E di ganito lang gagawin mo. Si consolidated, i-add mo lang yung dalawa. 325. So, 825. Yan. So, yan yung taxable income ni T1, ni T2, ni Conso, tapos si Bene, 250. So, 3, 4, 575, 475. Tama? May tanong? Sir, paano po naging 325,000 yung sa ano, Trust 1? Trust 1. 400 minus 75. O nga, thank you. Buti, kinlarify mo. 400 yan eh. 400 minus 75 minus 150. 175. Mali yung naisulat ko. Salamat for pointing that out. Yan. 175 dapat. Yan. 175. Okay? So, yan lang. Ganun na yung konsa. Wala masyadong ano, issue. Yan. Okay? So... Thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, 